Hello and welcome again to the Rider Review. This is Eric Karat Rider, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2017 comedy titled Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul. Now, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul runs for one hour and 31 minutes long. It is directed by David Bowers. The script was written by Jeff Kinney and David Bowers. It is, of course, based off of the series of the Diary of a Wimpy Kid novels by Jeff Kinney. So I guess it just came natural that he and David Bowers would be the ones responsible for writing the script. Makes sense. Uh, the producers are Nina Jacobson and Brad Simpson. It is composed by Edward Shearmoor. The cinematography by Anthony B. Richmond. And it was edited by Troy Takaki. And the stars of the movie are Jason Drucker, Charlie Wright, Alicia Silverstone, Tom Everett Scott, Owen Astalos, Dylan and Wyatt Walters, Joshua Hoover, Christopher A. Coppola, Kimberly Lincoln, Mira Silverman, Mimi Gould, Nathaniel Dixon, and Jake Sterner. Plus also a cameo by Jeff Kinney, the author of the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series. So making live action kids movies are actually a lot more trickier than one might imagine. They want to try to stay at the same level as their animated counterparts. You know, like, let's face it. You take a movie like Home Alone or Problem Child. It definitely has a lot more animated type of violence. Where bad guys tend to get their comeuppance left, right, and center. Almost the same similar vein as what you would see when antagonists try to go after protagonists in Disney and and Looney Tunes cartoons, Hanna-Barbera as well. The, pro the protagonist, the, the small underdog protagonist, will at most instances overcome their much larger adversary or their much more cunning adversaries. And never fails. They always do. Protagonists will always seem to overcome the antagonists. And you get that a bit in this movie. But then at the same time, we also have to realize that these are not animated characters. Live action kids are not animated kids. So there also has to be that balance between animated humor and live action humor. Because then they have to kind of water themselves down due to some levels of reality. I will give credit that the first three Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies have succeeded to overcome these trivial borders splendidly. However, this latest edition, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul, kind of gives me that impression that this franchise should have ended after Dog Days. Because... Dog Days did not fare very well. I mean, no, Dog Days fared well against the other three, but the long haul did not succeed. The other, the other three, the other three movies, like Diary, the first Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Roderick Rhodes, and Dog Days, those were the ones that. Those were the ones that. Um, were successful. The long haul did not do very well. And I will explain it to you. When Dog Days was released, it was in the year 2012. So I can kind of understand that if they were going to add a new installment, they would have to cast an entire new ensemble. Especially the kids who, although no fault of their own, have aged just like everyone else. It would be very hard and awkward to see 
late teenagers or mid 20 somethings play the roles of Greg, Roderick, or even Raleigh, or any other kid from the other three installments, because the characters that were intended in the Jeff Kinney novels to have not aged. It's just like animated characters. They're not made to age. Sure, they could probably either evolve or devolve into characters, their character roles, but in the end, they'll always still remain the same age. And that's kind of like what you would expect in the Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies if it was live action. I mean, like I said, no fault of their own. Kids age just like adults do. And it would be very, very awkward to see Greg or Roderick or Rowley or even Manny for that instant, for that matter, get older. When really their characters are grounded at a certain age limit. That's fine. But here's where things tend to get really, really ugly. Because the character, in fact, but the thing is, is this is where it gets bad. They eventually recasted the adult characters by having Alicia Silverstone replace Rachel Harris as Susan Hefley and Tom Everett Scott replacing Steve Zahn as Frank Hefley. I mean, if you think of the vacation movies, they always kept Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo as Clark and Ellen Griswold. They didn't have to replace the parents. Sure, they replaced Audrey and Rusty on four occasions in the four installments. But here they decided to go for a complete and total makeover. And is this this complete and total makeover for the better? Well, I'm sorry to say, no, it wasn't. I mean, okay, I'll give credit that they that this newly revamped ensemble put a great effort in capturing the atmosphere of the other three movies, but it was just poorly executed, and the script was downplayed so that the characters went from being believable in the first three Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies in the long haul, this movie made them drawn-out caricatures. The main red herring in this movie definitely comes from the script. And I can see the reason why. It's a shame that director and co-writer David Bowers, who directed the previous two Wimpy Kid movies, Roderick Rules and Dog Days, which I have to say Dog Days is the best of the series, he may have felt tired and reluctant in directing another Wimpy Kid movie because it felt like it just coasted through without really giving much care as to how this was going to turn out. And then you ask yourself, if the if the director doesn't care, then why the hell should the other actors and actresses care either? And that's kind of the impression I get. If you don't have the enthusiasm to direct another Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie, maybe, like I said, it should have ended at Dog Days. They do not need to do the long haul. And like the previous edition, Dog Days, the long, the long Haul is another sizzling summer movie featuring the Hefley clan on another misadventure. So the story goes a little something like this. Um, the Long Haul follows Greg, played by Jason Drucker and his family, as they go on a long road trip past several states to attend his Mima's house for her 90th birthday. But Greg doesn't have really that much interest in going to his Mima's house. 
He has other plans. In mind, which I will get to in a bit. So, so, so once again, we have another example of what we call a a lazy road trip movie. Something that we have seen many, many, many times before. Some of them work. Some of them don't work. This one, unfortunately, doesn't really work very well. Because, let's face it, this is all a lot of recycled, rehashed stuff from much more previous, more better movies. But we always try to do something new with this long, lazy road trip movie. So, head matriarch, Susan, played by Alicia Silverman, who clearly, obviously, wears the pants in the family, who runs the roost, even the father is kind of like just demoted to a to a bona fide older brother as opposed to a father. Well, she suggests that by going on instead of like taking an airplane to Mima's house, she decides to go by car, going through several states. But she wants to do something a little more interesting. Well, to her, that is. But not to the other kids, not to her three sons, Greg, Roderick, and um, Manny. No. The reason why she wants to go by way of car is just so that she could get the family to interact with each other a bit. And, I, and what I mean by interaction, I mean mouth-to-mouth -mouth interaction. Which means she wants you to turn off all your devices. Your phones, your laptops, your tablets, your Kindles. Or whatever, or whatever devices you have. And to actually have something called a traditional conversation, one-on-one -on -one discussions. Yep, so all, so all your electronical communicative apparatuses all must go into a bang. And much to the chagrin of the family members, even Frank himself was reluctant. They all decided to do it. Now, is this some kind of ways to save the earth and save the the planet from from like going back to the days of old when we actually used to communicate with people through mouth instead of do -do 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 on your little pads or whatever electronic devices you have? Is she saving the world? Not really. I got more to say about Susan. Now, okay, listen, I know the idea was a good one and I know her, her heart and her intentions were good. Yes, when you think about it in society, we have all kind of lost that way of communication through mouth. Instead, all we seem to want to do is just send emails or messages on our little electronic devices. And without those electronic devices, we're pretty much lost because we're so adjusted, so clinged on to it, we've actually forgot how to communicate. So I got to admit her intentions were good, but the way she conducts herself doesn't make her seem like she's doing it out of good intentions. She's just doing it out of pure tyranny, just because she wears the pants of the family. And it could be just to stroke her own ego or to have a feeling of great pride that she's saving the world from any further harm. When really she wasn't. I mean, yeah, it's good that we actually get to explore how deep in society the, fam the family dynamics have changed with everyone so fixated on their phones, their computers, their laptops, and other communication devices, and how we had lost... 
all of that as it taken us that, that even just for one second without our devices were lost. But the problem is, is that our script writer Bowers can't really figure out an end game behind this plot. And even though everything does work out in the end, like in typical family comedy cliches, everything always turns out in the end. The final product is actually taxing in how they delivered that message. And it actually comes across as awkward and not very inspiring. But they say back to let's go back to Greg. You see, Greg is only willing to go on this road trip is because it's not because it's almost like a pit stop to what he re, to what he really wants to do. You see, the purpose of this road trip is the perfect setting for what his real intentions are to. He wanted to go to some gamer expo. Which was not far from his Mima's house. And he's going there to meet his real hero, internet sensation Matt Digby, played by Joshua Hoover. Now he's going there because obviously Josh Hoover is like some kind of professional gamer. Yes, people get played, people get money, currency. Just for playing games. It's true. Basically some people just get money. Just as sitting on their asses all day. Playing fucking video games. Now isn't that a cool awesome way to make a living. But Josh Hoover is a competitive video gamer. And he's looked upon by millions and millions. And Greg is just one of them. And he would love, and Josh, and uh, well, Matt Digby is a record breaker in a certain video game. And he's making a lot of money doing it. Greg, of course, believes that him visiting this Matt Digby would also save his reputation after an embarrassingly awkward situation that went viral, which led him to be labeled as diaper hands. You see, as he was going to go rescue his brother Manny, who fell into some bottomless pit at a kitty place where he landed in a, he landed in some park where there were a lot of colorful balls, and it looked like he was buried there. Greg tries to save him, but all he ended up getting was a handful of poopy diapers. And every asshole took, went viral with it. So everywhere he goes, he gets a chorus of, Hey, what's happening, diaper hands? Yo, diaper hands. Hey, di it's diaper hands. All right. Yes. He feels that if he goes to this, this exposition, he will, he will definitely save his reputation and nobody will call him diaper hands ever again. Of course, in this movie, not everything goes Greg's way. I mean, what do you expect? He is a wimpy kid. And it seems like he always seems to be put into one awkward situation after another. But does that make Greg any more of a likable character in this movie? Hardly the chance. See, the message about Greg comes across as being more selfish than considerate. He doesn't care about his Mima's birthday. No, all he cares about is going to that exhibition just to save his reputation so he'll no longer be fucking called diaper hands. Just because he ended up, instead of rescuing his brother, he ends up having his 
hand is touching baby, baby poo. All wrapped in a repugnant, disgusting diaper. The movie also seems to come across as being very, very loud. And there seems to be just a myriad of parent and offspring conflicts, which seems to come across quite frequently. I mean, obviously, the kids in this movie seem to tend to argue a lot with the parents. You know, mom wants to take away all our electronical devices all just for her own selfish purposes so that she can have a decent family trip without the phones and the laptops or whatever. Hell, even Frank himself, who's the father of the family, also had to comply. And she's not doing it out of good intention. She's doing it also for her own selfish purposes. Because not one character displayed in this movie have really too much positive intentions going for them. They're all pretty much self-absorbed and selfish. Even though they think they're doing themselves a world of good. To be honest with you. They're not. The long haul kind of reminds me very much like. National Lampoon's Vacation series. Where we see a road trip. Where everything just goes wrong. Not just for Greg. But everyone. The whole family involved. Seems to be put in one awkward disposition after another. The problem here is that the execution was in very poor taste, making me question if even if this movie was really intended for a younger audience. On the one hand, sure, they make a moral lesson for kids about how important family is and that bringing back unity into the family has almost become obsolete because more people are texting than talking. And that bonding needs to come back into our lives. Because we haven't seen much bonding. Or maybe Greg, Roderick, and Raleigh were raised at an era at a time when, when texting was more priority than talking. But the problem is they inject too much grossed out humor to pass off for laughs. Which makes me question, was this movie intended for kids or was it intended for immature adults? I mean, a lot of the humor here is not very kid friendly. Sure, we as humans piss and shit and fart, but these jokes start to become overkill and they wear out quite rapidly that you just feel more disgusted. Greg seems to be often put in one weird situation after another. And the people around him are not exactly that reassuring. Because no one seems to care about the strange and awkward positions Greg has encountered during this whole duration of this movie. But I think one of the most thankless ca characters in this movie was Alicia Silverstone's portrayal of Susan Hefley. It's quite a shame that Silverstone had the unpleasant task of playing the thankless role as the overbearing mother Susan Hefley. To the point of being passed as an unintended villain. She was actually kind of like the main antagonist in the movie. 
After all, if it wasn't for her taking away all their electronic devices and not giving them back. Well, that's kind of a bit of a villain type. Her decisions are always finalized no matter what. And she doesn't give a fuck if she embarrasses her children. Putting them in one embarrassing situation after another. But the sad part is, is that her character never listens to their needs. Because she has such an overwhelming superiority. That her rules only matter. And no one else's. It's just not right. I mean, it's no fault of on behalf of Miss Silverstone, but the script in this movie makes her out the way, makes her out that way, and in the end, made me feel cringe because she never fully connects with the people who matter most. Family should be based on unity, which is something her character unfortunately lacks. She, whenever she says, "You don't ask why, you ask." How high? But she doesn't have the worst performance here. No. Actually, the biggest letdown was the newly revamped cast from the characters of Frank, played by Tom Everett Scott, and Roderick, played by Charlie Wright. In fact, during the Diary of a Wimpy Kid, the long run, there was actually a hashtag for Charlie Wright saying, hashtag not my Roderick. And in some ways, that is absolutely true. I'm not going to say this is the fact that Charlie Wright or should not have been cast because he's half Asian. No. But the fact of the matter is he did not have the same poise and the same character traits from the other three movies. And like I said, this is no fault of their own. They put their efforts in their performances. Their characters were way off the previous installments. In the three Wimpy Kid movies... Frank is a shrill man who reacts over the smallest details to becoming more in on the charades that happens in the film. But Frank is quite badly downplayed here. And while Roderick is played off way beyond, beyond the reprehensible character that he personified from the previous sellings, but before he was just an image of what a younger sibling could see what their child will end up being like as they get older. Toxic demeanor, low in intelligence, and begs his parents for money to repair his van. I'm not saying Charlie Wright was one-dimensional, but he just did not have that mass appeal. Say it could be said for Frank. I mean, he's pretty much playing sort of like a bona fide older brother than a full blown husband. So, before the Diary of Olympi Kids would eventually make the transition from live action to animated in 2021, The Long Haul was considered to be a direct to video animated film. Which to me would have been a smarter decision and more acceptable if opponents in this long haul, it's few and far between. And sure, even though it's aimed for kids, it's the parents who commit more underhanded antics, and it's not enough to be fully endorsed. So I don't really recommend this movie too much. I would probably say no. This movie is no good. You should do the other three, but you can skip the long haul because that movie is a piece of shit. 
So when all is said and done, if I was to give this movie a scale out of 10, I would give Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul, a 5 out of 10. So I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my channel, please feel free to do so. If you should leave a comment, go right ahead. But just remember the three simple rules. Be kind, be courteous, and please refrain from any rude comments. And I will be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Wright Writer saying, keep watching those movies, and I'll see you around. Goodbye.